We're here today with the Director General of the Center for International Forestry Research, C4, Dr. Robert Nassi. Good morning, Robert. Morning, Rodrigo. Uh, today we're marking the special occasion of the International Day of Forests. What is the state of the world's forests? Well, the state of, I would say, not as good as we would like to have it. Uh, if you look at the various type of forests and uh, using a pretty rough cl classification, the boreal forest has had some problem because of climate change, because of infestation of uh, pests, uh, large amount of fire, drought. So, and it is the largest forest in, on Earth. I mean, it's even bigger than the tropical forest. So the situation is a bit complicated there and with the climate change and the <coughs> melting of the permafrost, it can be even worse. Uh, the temperate forest is the one that has been increased in size uh, during the last uh, five years, uh, based on the various uh, reports. But in, the increase is mainly linked to, <coughs> to plantation and something. So that's, but, but in a sense, the temperate forest is probably the one that is faring the best for the time being, except that we do have some pest problem like the emerald ash borer that is just wiping out entire species in, in, in Europe. And, <coughs> and tropical forest, which is the, the main remit of C4, uh, there has been a lot of emphasis on wet or humid forest, the, what they call a high forest where we have had uh, some uh, reduce, reduction of deforestation in Brazil. Uh, we have had some efforts done on this forest and, and although deforestation is, is still too high, it has, it has reduced uh, in, in this uh, uh, tropical moist forest. We still have a lot of problems mainly linked to degradation. And I think that 2017 was the first year or there was more emission linked to degradation than to deforestation. Uh, so that's important. Another aspect of the tropical forest is the dry forest and that, that we are really have a problem because it's an area that where you have most of the population in the tropics that is the most degraded and the most endangered and where deforestation doesn't stop. So, so in a sense deforestation in the Amazon has been reduced but deforestation in the dry area of uh, Cerrado has not been reduced, it has, been, it has even increased. The, the dry land, the, the dry forests are generally more threatened and overlooked in the international dialogue compared to wet forests. So if you have to summarize, I mean, so the, the situation of forest in the world is not as good as it should be, given the importance of forest. And this year's theme is uh, Forests and Sustainable Cities. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about what research is C4 doing in this area? We have, a, although we don't work in cities, so we don't work really on urban forestry. And, and there's been quite an interesting series of, of work uh, in, the la <coughs> in the couple of years, uh, in 2016, 2017, that showed the importance of trees in terms of mitigating uh, climate, uh, protecting bindling, something like that. What, what C4 is doing in terms of um, uh, cities or urbanism and, and, and forestry is really looking at the link between uh, the fact that we are moving towards a urban world. More than 60% of the population is living in cities, but also the fact that these cities, they are creating a big call for resources coming from, from outside. And, 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 and that, that's important. That's the thing that we need to keep understanding is the link between the cities and, and the natural outside. And it's something that appears in, in different way in terms of our, our migration from the, the forest area or from the agricultural into city is changing what is happening in the forest. How the increasing size of city is in fact uh, heating uh, or deforesting um, very uh, uh, fertile or the most, some of the very good forest land. And, and, and as C4, we are working on this issue of the impact of, uh, I would say, urbanization in terms of what is happening in the forest. And at the same time, the impact of migration uh, towards a generally urban center in terms of what is happening to the people that are left and are migrating in the forest. In 2018, C4 is celebrating its 25th anniversary and in this time it has developed a strong reputation as the leading research institution for tropical forests. Could you tell us in what way has C4 advanced the agenda for the world's forests? This year, in 2018, uh, C4 is 25 years old. 
And I think the, <coughs> the main contribution of C4 to, to forestry uh, and to forests has been really uh, looking beyond the forest uh, and, and having um, a lot of the players and, uh, and the stakeholder understanding that many problems that are affecting forests happen because of things that are situated outside of the forest and outside of the classic forestry sector. Well, this work that we have been doing beyond the classical forestry uh, sector like forest management, uh, reduce impact logging, uh, silviculture, that, that set a C4 aside uh, compared to other research organizations and that I think has been the major achievement of, of, of the work that or the impact that we could have, have I've had uh, during the last uh, 25 years. Although we, we did some work on sort of the classical forestry, uh, this is not where, where we have had the, the most impact. We have had the most impact in terms of uh, expanding the notion of forestry and showing how forestry in fact contributes to sustainable development and how a lot of the things that are happening into forestry uh, are happening into, in, for, uh, in forests uh, are linked to uh, decisions that are taken outside of the forestry sector. And looking ahead, what are C4's research priorities coming up? This is just trying to achieve this, this uh, recognition of the role of forests for society and as a whole, and not only the, as a produce, producing uh, timber, but, but also as producing timber. This is to uh, understand uh, what, what is happening uh, because of a uh, very important factor outside of the forestry sector, like demography, migration, uh, in terms of forests, uh, this is to uh, understand the role of forests in uh, mitigating and uh, adapting to climate change, but also the impact of climate change will have on forests. So that's mainly uh, what we are going to do. And uh, because of the international agenda, is now it's, there is a lot about uh, degradation, about uh, restoration. This is also something uh, on which we will uh, invest uh, significant efforts and especially into moving from commitments uh, into action. There is a lot of commitment. There's a commitment to restore such amount of forest. There is a commitment to uh, give back uh, such amount of forest to local people. There is, there is a lot of commitments, but, but we need to go beyond the commitments and uh, into action. And what C4 can do is to provide uh, evidence and the scientific uh, backstopping to move from commitment to action. And in moving from commitment to action, finance is one of the key pieces uh, missing sometimes from forest landscape restoration. In which ways can uh, the private sector step up to, to these commitments and to this action? The issue of uh, financing for, for forests has been a sort of a recurring one and a, a bit of a vexing one for, for as long as C4 has existed and even before. And it's not, not simply linked to the restoration uh, issue. And sort of. In terms of the specific question about restoration, it is clear that all the commitments we have in terms of restoration, uh, given all these commitments, uh, there is not enough public money to achieve these commitments. So we need like to bring the private sector in investing in, in restoration. And to have the private sector investing of restoration, we need to have a clear understanding and a clear uh, consideration of the economics of restoration. So in a sense, it's not simply restoring forests so that they look like they were before being degraded, uh, because uh, it is sometimes possible, it is sometimes not possible, but in fact, it's more looking at restoration as something that generates economic value for the forests that have been restored, and that this economic value uh, can interest an investor, and at the same time can convince uh, the people or the reason for which the forest has been deforested in first instance, not to be uh, degraded again. Uh, so the sole issue of we will be able to attract the private sector only if we show the private sector uh, that the investment makes sense. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be granted from public money and there is not enough public money. So it's really trying to show and to understand what, what are the economic uh, factor that we have to consider in terms of restoration and how to bring an economic value uh, of the forest that has been restored uh, uh, for many cases. There will be some forests that are restored only for protection. But 
I don't think that will be the majority of all the forest that will be restored. I mean, a lot of the forest that, that has to be restored, or the land that has to be restored, has to be restored for economic activities. So that we don't go again into primary forest and degrade the primary forest. So in other words, taking a more comprehensive approach to, to the way we look at forests. Um, and in that sense, C4 has been a pioneer as well in linking forests to, to the global development agenda and as well to the landscape approach. And one of the key components or one of the key projects for C4 is the Global Landscapes Forum. So could you tell us a bit more about it? The, the Global Landscape Forum, it's, it's more than a project. Uh, I would say it's really a, an aspiration to, to create a, a platform where all the stakeholders uh, interested in, in forest and forestry issue can come and, and present their issue, discuss their issue and look for solutions. So that, that, that's really what makes the, the nature of the Global Landscape Forum unique, is that it is not only forestry related, uh, we also consider other type of land use. It's not only for the research organization, it's not only for the public donor, it's not only for the private. It's, it's a platform that is trying to bring uh, everybody on the table uh, and to create a, a movement so that uh, our natural resources uh, are better managed and are more sustainably managed for both the livelihood of the people that are living there but also for the biodiversity and for the ecosystem services for all the natural value. So that, that's really uh, what, what makes the Global Landscape Forum different Another more thematic initiative is, is the, this idea that, okay, we are going to create a, a movement, we are going to create a, a community of people that are interested in, in sustainably managing the place where they are living, what we call a landscape. But, uh, so. Okay, thank you very much, Robert. Thank you, Rodrigo.